Hi, and thank you for joining me in this video on flight planning for turbulence. In this video, we're going to talk about the strategies for turbulence avoidance, as well as the products that can be used for flight planning. When flight planning for turbulence, our number one goal is to avoid hazardous turbulence to keep passengers safe and make sure the aircraft uh, does not experience structural damage. But also, we need to look at the patterns in our atmosphere that produce turbulence. Sometimes it's difficult to avoid turbulence, so we need to have a heads up before we encounter it. The strategy for turbulence avoidance must keep in mind the size or the scale on which turbulent eddies occur. Also, we need to be mindful of how different types of aircraft respond to turbulence. And finally, we need to be on the lookout for areas that produce turbulence. Turbulence that is felt by aircraft is a result of eddies in our atmosphere. And those eddies or swirls have diameters between 10 meters and one kilometer in diameter, or in English units, that's between 30 feet and 3,000 feet. So these are very small scale phenomena. And also the time at which they occur, the time frames which they last, are very short, only between 10 seconds to 10 minutes, so they're very difficult to forecast. Our best computer models have horizontal resolutions of between 3 and 12 kilometers, and vertical resolutions that can be as small as 20 meters in the lowest layers of the atmosphere, but they get gradually bigger as you go up through the upper atmosphere. And time steps are on the order of about 15 minutes. What that means is that these eddies that produce turbulence for aircraft are on a size and a time frame or time duration that are much smaller than what our computer models can forecast into the future. So we can't really resolve turbulence using our computer models. The next item that we'll discuss in strategies for turbulence avoidance is how an airplane responds to turbulence. An aircraft's response to turbulence depends upon many factors, including the mass of the aircraft, its velocity, its wing loading, and also its airfoil characteristics. For the same atmospheric conditions and the same turbulence in the atmosphere, Aircraft will respond differently, and pilots will report it differently. There is much subjectivity in pilot reports, and that depends upon pilot experience, of course, the type of aircraft the pilot is, is flying, and other factors. And then also, as we mentioned earlier, uh, different aircraft respond differently to turbulence. So it makes, for making, it, makes it difficult to ha get accurate and objective pilot reports subjectivity in pilot reports and also how aircraft experience turbulence, the meteorological community came up with the eddy dissipation rate, or EDR. As of 2001, it is the ICAO standard for turbulence, and it's proportional to the vertical acceleration of the atmosphere. It's aircraft independent, which means that uh, it's similar to temperature. Uh, where temperature is a measure of the motion of molecules in our atmosphere. Uh, but a temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit for one person might be too cold, whereas 70 degrees Fahrenheit for another person might be too hot. So the number is the same, but how people feel the temperature, how they experience it, is different. EDR is much the same way. It is a number that measures the dissipation of energy in our atmosphere. However, different aircraft respond to it differently. So uh, EDR is measured in values from zero to one, and these are plotted at uh, various uh, websites. Another element that must be considered in your strategy for turbulence avoidance is the weather that is producing the turbulence occurs on scales that are much smaller than what we can forecast, what our numerical models can simulate, we must look at large-scale indicators to get an idea of where turbulence can be expected. 
And these large scale indicators include uh, wind shear, wind st uh, atmospheric stability, and also flow patterns, meaning that how the wind is spreading out or coming together, things that we call in meteorological terms, deformation, vorticity, and other types of kinematic features. With that in mind, we can look at the weather products that are currently available for turbulence avoidance and understand their limitations. Weather products can be generally broken down into advisories, prognostic charts, and also the graphical turbulence guidance product. The Aviation Weather Center and also Center Weather Service Units provide advisories to alert us of areas of moderate or severe turbulence. Moderate turbulence can be found in center weather advisories and also the AirMet Tango, whereas severe turbulence is only forecasted in SIGMETs. Weather prognostic charts produce forecasts of moderate or greater turbulence. There are prog charts for the low levels, mid levels, and high levels. The graphical turbulence guidance forecast, or GTG, is produced by the Aviation Weather Center. It is an automated turbulence forecasting system based on computer models and other types of information that we'll get into shortly. What it forecasts, it forecasts clear air turbulence, mountain wave turbulence, low level terrain turbulence, thermally induced turbulence, and also convectively induced turbulence from large scale clouds. GTG is not intended to predict turbulence associated with convection and thunderstorm clouds, in other words, small scale type turbulence. And we need to also be mindful that one of the big limitations with the GTG is that it is completely generated by computers. There is no human intervention. The GTG is driven by the NOAA Rapid Refresh uh, Numerical Weather Prediction Model, which has a resolution of 13.5 kilometers. And it uses multiple diagnostics for forecasting. Takes input from rapid refresh model, as well as observed pilot reports of EDR, in other words, aircraft reports, and also cloud to ground lightning flash data. And with that, it imports it into uh, algorithms. There are 10 different al algorithms that are used to calculate turbulence. And these algorithms are empirically related to the eddy dissipation rate, or EDR. And uh, from these algorithms, uh, they produce a forecast of turbulence. The GTG forecasts EDR uh, up to 18 hours into the future. And there is a forecast that is generated every hour. So in other words, it's continuously updated and you can look out 18 hours into the future to see what kind of turbulence you can expect along a route of flight. You can view the GTG output at the Aviation Weather Center. Go to their turbulence page, click on the bottom image, which will take you to a page that shows you the EDR. This is the graphical turbulence guidance page. First, you have to select the type of aircraft. After that, you can select the type of turbulence, whether you want to look at mountain wave turbulence, clear air turbulence, or combined. Then also you can select the time out to 18 hours into the future and also altitudes in 2000 foot increments. The colors indicate the values of EDR from zero to 100. However, um, when you select the type of aircraft, it will indicate for that particular EDR whether you'll experience light, moderate, or severe turbulence. And your selections for types of aircraft are heavy, medium, and light. Heavy aircraft are ones greater than 300,000 pounds, such as Boeing 747s and 777. Medium aircraft are things like A320s and Boeing 737s. They're from 15,500 pounds up to 300,000 pounds. And then light aircraft are ones less than 15,500 pounds, such as any Cessna Piper or Beach type aircraft. I hope this video provided you some insight on how to flight plan for turbulence.